Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Maxim Barkov, and the title of our talk will be Teaching English Pronunciation Online, Practical Tips and Benefits of Shadowing. I'm an associate professor at the Enalt UNAM, Enalt, which stands for the school, the National School for Languages, Linguistics uh, and Translation at the UNAM, Mexico. And well, let's get started and let's take a look at the table of contents. Before we do that, let me remind you that you can access this presentation by following this link. It can be found on bit.ly, as you can see, it's bit.ly slash mb, my initials, underscore, then bbelt2022. And you can find the, all the, the, uh, the sources that I will be citing in this presentation, all the materials you might need. And so if you're interested, you can do that. Okay, regarding the structure of the presentation itself, we have several points to cover. First of all, we'll take a look at the introduction. So uh, we'll just discuss, uh, discuss our uh, background, uh, how we arrived at this topic. Then I will talk about the courses we, we taught. Uh, second point, my context. Then the third point will be practical tips. So how can you improve your, your students' pronunciation online? What can be done about it? The fourth point will be the benefits of shadowing. We will talk about, uh, obviously, firstly, we'll need to define this term, what shadowing is, and then we'll see what benefits it can bring to your own class. And finally, we'll try to make some sort of summary um, uh, summary of the presentation and without further ado let's jump right in and let's go to introduction and as you all know the pandemic has changed our lives in many different ways and in our case in the case of the UNAM the, the uh, we were affected or we first heard about the pandemic in March 2019 and all of a sudden, we were told that we would be teaching fully online courses. And like all of us, well, what we had to do, we had to take different workshops, MOOCs, uh, watch tutorials, read books on online education. And it wasn't easy. It was quite a challenge. And right now, as, as we all know, I, I think that we might be moving towards hybrid or blended learning. So we'll see how it all pans out. And the question that we had at the, uh, sorry about that. And the question that we had at the beginning of the pandemic, is it possible to teach pronunciation in an online environment? Because we didn't know where to start. In a, a traditional brick and mortar class, you know where you stand. But in an online environment, what do you do? And the and fortunately, we were able to answer this question. And yes, in fact, it's not that difficult. If you know a couple of tricks, if you know where you stand, what programs you can use, and what you um, and several several key principles of this environment. And by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to what uh, basically what will you take away from this presentation? First of all, you will be able to explain how to use different free, freemium and public domain applications, programs and platforms and how to use them in your own classroom. And then you'll be able to describe the principal benefits of shadowing. Once again, you'll understand what it is and how to use it in your own class okay well uh, if you don't mind let's go back and let's talk about some of the courses that we had to teach during the pandemic the first course that we had to teach was the phonetic and phonological dimension of l2 english in the bachelor's program in applied linguistics all in all we had 29 students and it was a 32 hour course by the way, the level of our students was somewhere around the B1 mark, according to the CEFR Common European Framework of Reference. And we have to, to we had to provide them with both theory and pronunciation practice. 
they there were two hours of classes per week well uh, two hours but one time per week so one class which lasted two hours plus there there was approximately three hours of of homework and it was a fully online course and we use we um we we use the the principles defined by Bircher and Conrad, uh, the principles of an online learning community. So we told our students that we'll be working online, that we had to support one another, and that we had to interact in different online spaces, forums, and leave comments, and, and, um, and be in touch with one another. And then it was a flipped classroom course. That was one of the courses that we had to teach. And then there was another, which happens to be the, uh, let me see, a uh, pronunciation workshop in the English department. Very different target audience this time. It, well, we had 10 students. And once again, it was a 32 hour course. According to the CEFR, their level was approximately, I, I'd say it was, they were at the A2, uh, plus mark and they were more interested in in improving their own pronunciation they didn't need any any theory just practice and once again it was a, a one time per week course two hours per week plus approximately 30 minutes of of homework uh, this time it was a fully online language course not content course language course and we had to use the principles of an online learning community once again to make it more to make to make it more uh, to make our students collaborate with one another and let's go back so we've covered the first two points and let's move on to the third point practical tips first let's discuss the textbooks and materials that we normally use and that we use in the pandemic. Um, uh, this is the, the book that I strongly recommend, um, uh, Ship or Sheep by Anne Baker, uh, amazing book that contains some fantastic audios. Then English Pronunciation in Use Elementary by Jonathan Marks. Uh, it contains some great uh, exercises, great practice for especially drill exercises to improve one's pronunciation but if you uh, but if you're more uh, well in this case we, we talked about phonemes so if you're interested in phonemes i i would say that these are the books you might want to use in your class but if you're more interested in the uh, in teaching the difference between content and function words intonation or, or connected speech then i would say that you might want to use these books like for instance what do you say by nina weinstein or jazz chance by carolyn graham two great books um they the 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 audios that they have are very illustrative they i i, I think that your, your students would be delighted to, to to work with them and even try to you might even want to stage them in your own class plus you might want to use fables by by Aesop and especially the um, the translation called the edition called the Aesop for children and the beauty of of fables by Aesop is that they are in the public domain for example uh, this edition might be found on uh, the project Gutenberg website or you can find the audios for, for this edition on the uh, LibriVox website. So one or the other, you can combine both the text and the audios. They're very short, very illustrative, and most of the students are already familiar with the fables. Now, uh, second part, uh, additional resources. Um, I also recommend using the, the videos from uh, pronunciation tips from BBC Learning English. By the way, as you can see, it's a hyperlink. So if you'd like to access some of the materials provided here, you can do so by clicking on, on the titles in question. Uh, like I said, the videos from BBC Learning English are fantastic. They're very short. They are about two, two uh, minutes long. 
um, very easy to understand, very easy to follow, and my students do enjoy them a lot. And if you if you're looking for uh, something more, um, something if, if you'd like to share, if you're working with viral charts, if you're working with the IPA, you might uh, give these sites a go. American IPA chart contain it contains a lot of images, a lot of um, uh, the, the description of the IPA, well, for example, the, the 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 image of the vowel space is very easy to to, to follow, very easy to, to understand. Uh, I I strongly recommend it as well. American IPA chart. Then third part, interaction. I think that interaction is key when it comes to online environments. In these case, we had to rely on Google Classroom and we mostly use open questions because, because remember, you can create a question, not necessarily a task, but a question and you can leave it open so that every any student can see what uh, their classmates had to say on the subject. Or if you're using Edmodo, in this case, obviously you have to be using the wall because everything, the wall is extremely important, is crucial when it comes to interaction on this LMS. Then Kialo, a fantastic website, especially for, for debates. So if you're trying to create a debate on some pronunciation topic, obviously you can give it a go and I'll provide you with examples later on. Plus Google Jamboard for brainstorming sessions or especially if you're eliciting some ideas from your students. Plus Google Docs and Slides to promote collaborative work. Uh, a wide array of apps and programs that you can use in your own class. So let's take a look at, uh, at a couple of examples. First of all, we've got Kialo. Like in this case, we asked our students uh, if people with non-standard pronunciation, be it regional or uh, some pronunciation associate, associated with certain social classes, uh, do these people have to modify or adapt it in some way? And we had this debate in class. So first we asked them to provide the arguments in favor of the of this idea or what what we ask them to, to provide arguments either in favor or against this idea like in this case they shouldn't think that yes it should be adapted because it's clearly making communication impossible sometimes yes it may get in the way of our communication while this student believes that it's part of our identity and we cannot be asked to change the way we we speak or express our, our, ourselves um and obviously, it's it's great for creating different kinds of debate, uh, debates because at first our students can work in small groups, let's say in breakout rooms, and then they co can go back and we can discuss the, the, this question as a full group to see what they have to say about this topic. So this is Kialo and then um, uh, Google Classroom. Like in, in, in this case, um, my students had to watch a video on the on different varieties of English, uh, and they learned um, and uh, or, or, and they understood how T flapping works, for instance, uh, national and international varieties of English, and many other. Uh, it was a very informative video. As you can see, since it's an open question, these persons' classmates could interact with uh, with her. Why? Because they, they, they could leave comments, they could contribute to the topic and they could say, okay, so look, we've got this. Uh, you should definitely check out this website or this video might help you understand the topic in, in hand or you should definitely do this or, or, or that. And in this way, we can create interaction between students and, and well, obviously, in, in um, in the case of this video, it was based on varieties of English, and they had to discover them uh, on their on their own. Then, uh, Google Jamboard, like we said for warm up, is fantastic. Like, like here, what words you usually associate 
with pronunciation classes, please write them on the Jamboard attached to this post. And they um, they wrote everything that they had on, on their mind at that point, at that time, for instance, articulate, sound recognition, intonation, diction, tongue twisters, and so on and so forth. Once again, first they work in, small, uh, in breakout rooms, then they come back and, uh, we sh and we share our answers with one another. It's really, really worth giving, giving it a go. Now, uh, Google Docs. Google Docs, I usually ask them to go once again to breakout rooms, work, um, work together and complete, for example, a table or to uh, do a certain task like, like here they had to watch a video on the differences between uh, between between bbc english and general american pronunciation and they noticed well once again it was several people working on the same topic like here they noticed that they they tend to drop the, uh, the r in the middle or at the end uh, clever becomes what well, clever Mark, Mark. Well, in American English, uh, you have to you have to enunciate the R sound at the end of the word, like clever, Mark, and so on and so forth. But that's what they did, and I think that they they did a remarkable job. So Google Docs, um, I, I would definitely recommend them. Um, and then. Let's talk about the programs that we could use in, in a communicative class. We talked about different uses of, 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 of um, online programs and apps, but what's about a traditional language class? L let's say that you're following the uh, PPP structures, so presentation, practice, production. And in these case, and let's say that you, you have a a uh, pronunciation class. So this time we'd like to focus on pronunciation. As you can see, um, we chose Google Jamboard for warm up. Once again, it's it's very good for eliciting information. Then presentation, Google Slides. I think that it, it could be a good alternative to other programs, especially uh, since it, it's, it's free for uh, Google for Gmail users. That practice, we could use Kahoot, Mentimeter, Quizlets, or any other app, or we can even include uh, uh, practice exercises. We can embed them in our Google Slides. And finally, production, we could use Google Docs, and I will explain how that can be used, or we can even create games on January. Well, here's an example of of the use of Kahoot, like we talked about the differences between British English and American English, and then we had to play a very short game. I, I um, it was a practice exercise to see if they understood the topic. Like the sound R is always pronounced in British English, and they had to choose whether it was true or false. And what we normally do, the teacher normally shares uh, their screen, and the 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 students have to answer the questions on their cell phones so they can see the uh, the, the questions in the uh, or on their own screen let's say on zoom and then they have to answer the questions on their on their mobiles or like here we're using google docs for production activities and we came up with, with this task Limericks to practice the the, the, uh, the sounds ear, air, and o, oh, diphthongs. And they had, for instance, this diff, uh, uh, this limerick that once was a man with no fear, here, uh, fear, here, bear, hair for a year. And they had to complete it together in pairs or small groups. But you might be wondering, let's say that I created the, this file, this template, how can I share it with my with my students? What can be can be done about it? And in fact, there's a little trick that I'd like to share with you. Uh, you might not know, but we can force our students into creating a new copy of the file. First, uh, firstly, we've got to ask them. Uh, we've got to share our file 
it's really important otherwise they won't be able to, to access it so we uh, go to to share yes we'll go we have to enter our google docs we'll go to share then we click on share with anyone with the link it's really important and then we have to take a look at our link over here as you can see the uh well we've got sort of the address space and we've got to replace edit with copy so i've got this file that i'd like to present to my students and i've got to replace edit with copy if i do that what my students will see is this uh, copy documents would you like to make a copy of limericks make a copy they won't be able to modify or to do anything to the original file and it's really important especially uh, if we if we if it's taken us a lot of time to create some some activity and what's about genuinely it, it, interestingly enough i discovered it the other day but there are a great number of great activities on genuinely especially games like for example here we've got snakes and ladders so we've got three tokens that can move on the on the ladder we can even roll the dice and we can provide our students with these questions if we can add uh, this sort of orbs or spheres or grains, not sure how to call them. And we can add questions like, would you prefer to have 10 more friends on Facebook or 20 more followers on Twitter? So we use this activity to practice the pronunciation of aspirated plosives. Prefer 10, k, 20, Twitter. Okay. And uh, it were, uh, our students had a lot of fun and there are many more games on genially and they're they're definitely worth giving it a go part five practical tips part five shadowing shadowing is also extremely useful for pronunciation teaching and what is shadowing you might have heard about it but let's define this term first according to kadota shadowing is a technique wherein learners track the heard speech and repeat it back verbally in as exact a manner as possible while continuing to listen to listen attentively to incoming messages once again in as exact a manner as possible while continuing to listen attentively to incoming messages what does it mean let's explain it in plain english basically let's say that you've got a an oral AU oral and oral stimulus that you are listening to and then you've got to repeat it without a delay basically you hear something and, and you repeat it without a delay and you've got to become this person you've got to mimic uh, mimic her while you're hearing the stimulus you don't have to process the message no delay just you hear something and you repeat it uh, like, like here, I'd like to speak to Jane and um to him. And the student has to say the exact same thing. I'd like to speak to Jane and um to him. Okay? The exact same thing. No processing. No understanding. Well, obviously, it is better. What, what The student doesn't need to understand absolutely everything. Or they might not have time to process it process it correctly and it's okay yeah so we hear something and then we repeat it we repeat it and we try to kind of uh what to become this person if you like and the 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 text that you you might want to use for for these kind of activities they need to be short entertaining easy to understand and simple in terms of language use short entertaining easy to understand and very very simple and um well and regarding the instructions for sharing tasks that we, we had in our courses were the following first that our students had to read the text the text in question that they had to listen to the audio of the same text the the, the text tended to be quite short actually uh, I, I would say somewhere around 
for say 60 seconds, I'd say. Uh, read the text while imitating the speaker as closely as possible. As you can see, now we've got uh, text plus audios. Then listen to the audio without the text. We don't need the text at this stage. And then whenever they, they were ready, they were asked to record themselves using either whatcrew.com or Audacity, or they could even um, they could even use their mobiles. It didn't matter at, at this point. Okay, so first text, then audios, and then just audios. And they had to kind of own the text that they were working with. Uh, for instance, like here, well, we use what crew and uh, some students use notes apps on their mobiles. And since we're working with open questions on Google Classroom, it was extremely easy to share our audios with, with each other. Like here, this student, by the way, I mod modify the link. Don't worry about the student's privacy. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, this audio, so the, this student, shares their audio with their classmates and as you can see we've got two students i had to delete the, the avatar of the students for to protect their privacy and as you can see this person says amazing job well done uh congrats and this person what an accurate rhythm excellent job you did there indeed indeed um once again audios we share audios with each other and then since uh we made use of open questions. Our, our students could listen to each other's recordings. And, and that's amazing. That's one of the, the, one of the, the benefits of, of LMS. What's about pronunciation assessment? Let's say that we would like to assess our students' understanding of some pronunciation topic or their speaking skills in general, what can we do about that? And I would say that Google Forms could be a solution. In this case, uh, probably not the solution, but a solution. It saves an enormous amount of time. Obviously, there are many other great websites, platforms, but Google Forms is, is incredible. Why? Because we can use it for simple tests on some pronunciation topics, we can use it uh, in exams on phonetics, if we're teaching phonetics um, in, in some program, or if we are doing a, um, a language exam, it, uh, we would like to focus on our students' speaking skills. How can we do that? Let's see. Uh, uh, like here, okay, so we've got a question here. What is the difference between contract and contract? And we worked on the IPA and word stress in this unit. And the, the beauty of this test is, is, that, is the fact that it was automated. For example, here, feedback for correct answers, we, we, could, we could provide our students with with autom 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 automated feedback, which is amazing. For example, here, uh, feedback, correct. If they choose this, uh, th this answer, this uh, obviously it would be correct. So correct, stress changes the meaning of some words in English. Yes, stress does change the meaning of some words in English. It would be correct. But if they choose something else, then we, we they would see the following wrong you need to re-watch the presentation and i could have added the the link to my presentation to my video and that's incredible that's incredible i could create automated tests in google forms or um I, or for example here i've got an open question uh, once again, we're working on the IPA. So uh, they got this, this transcription, museum, museum, and then they have to write the word. Base, the only thing that ha they, they have access to is the transcription of the word. And once again, I've added the correct answer. And even though, let's say that they're using capital letters or they made a spelling mistake, 
The beauty of Google Forms is that I can go back and correct the uh, the um, correct the, the points given for this exercise manually. So I could say that, okay, this person made a spelling mistake, but the answer is correct. So I can go back and I can do it. I can correct their, 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 their mark manually. And that that's, that's terrific. And finally, language exam, speaking. Like in this case, we're asking our students to make a short oral presentation with an introduction, arguments in favor or against, and a conclusion on some topic. Like for example, here, two writers of the book need to be involved in the film version. Why do you think so? Good idea, bad idea, why? And they've got to record themselves. In this case, what we do, we ask them to use either their mobiles, Vocru, or Audacity, and then upload their file as their answer. And it's so it's so uh, efficient because the teacher has access to the audio after the exam, and then they can use a rubric to assess their students' performance. Obviously, our exams won't be as communicative as they used to be, well, back back in the day, but I think that it's probably the best one of the best ways of of um, assessing speaking skills in online environments. Now, uh, part seven, resources for students. And we've got to provide our students with different resources and materials, like for example, YouTube channels. We can tell them, okay guys, so these YouTube channels, you should definitely give them a go. For instance, Jay, uh, Jay Jodl, Speak Well, she has some great videos on, on accents, on different ways of, of, of pronouncing things. Uh, or accents way, uh, accents way English with Hayda, English pronouncing roadmap, and you can access all these YouTube channels if you click on on the titles. Or I uh, I recommend these course to my students, the pronunciation of American English specialization. It can be found on Coursera. Uh, great great specialization. It provides our students with the basics of of um, general American English. And we can also ask our students to use good dictionaries, meaning that well, reliable dictionaries that have both transcriptions and audios. For instance, if we're dealing with beginner students, we might opt for word reference because it, it's a bilingual dictionary. And well, the audios are there. You can find many different accents, uh, Scottish accents, Irish accents, British accents. It, it, it's incredible. Or uh, I would say from the intermediate level onwards, we might make use of the Cambridge Dictionary. Cambridge Dictionary, once again, uh, they're free. Uh, we can uh, listen both to, to audios and, and see the transcriptions of the words we're working with. And then exposure to English is paramount, uh, 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 is paramount especially, uh, I would say, at the intermediate level. Uh, and Luke's English podcast is a must. Luke's English podcast, great, uh, great podcast. And Luke is uh, does an incredible job where he. Uh, what I like about it is that he talks, uh, he speaks slowly, he takes his time, and he doesn't use complex expressions. Definitely, definitely recommended. And what's about teachers? Uh, if you're interested in improving your online teaching skill, you might want to take a look at this, at this specialization, Virtual Teacher Specialization by University of California, California Irvine. Um, definitely, definitely recommend it once it provides you with the basics of online teaching. And then if you're interested in Google Workspace apps, definitely teacher center by google it is free you can find a lot lots of different courses on this website or if you'd like to take an exam and obtain a certificate it can be done and they're quite cheap to be honest i think the first level certificate costs about 10 10 dollars now let's go back and we've covered the first four uh, the first three points so introduction my context 
practical tips and let's move on to the benefits of shadowing. Now we know what shadowing is. We said it's repeating an oral stimulus without a delay. And what do we know about it? We know that it has been used in interpreter teaching pro uh, interpreter training programs in Japan. It uh, it has been uh, um, it has been found that it leads to improvement in terms of listening and pronunciation skills. So listening skills and pronunciation skills, and it enhances automatic speech tasks. For example. Uh, Kadota says that it might not help us with uh, with the choice of what we'd like to say, what we're thinking about, or I'd like to talk about this or that. So it might not help us with the conceptualizer level, but it does help us with the formulator and the articulator level. What does it mean? It helps us to choose our words um, faster, to be more efficient when it comes to, to grammar, uh, morphology, well, phonetics and phonology, articulation. And it helps us with all these levels because if, you if your, if your uh, reaction is automated, it becomes easier for you to, to, to speak in a foreign language. And regarding the current research on this topic, it can be said that shadowing leads to uh, improvements in comprehensibility, or improvement, sorry, in comprehensibility, rhythm, and intonation. Comprehensibility, rhythm, and intonation. And we are carrying out research on the benefits of shadowing, Edenal. And our students were worked with the B1 Plus Mexican learners of English where shadowing was the only means of practice in the entire course. So uh, there was a lot of theory, but the only way to practice pronunciation was shadowing. All in all, they had to shadow 25 audios over the course of the semester. Uh, and they had to complete a reading and a shadowing task at the beginning of the course, and then they had to read and shadow the same text at the end of the course so that so that we could see if there's any kind of improvement basically we use the pre uh, pre-test post-test model and it must be noted that our research is still in progress but we've got some early results we found out that our students showed a very positive attitude towards shadowing in general very positive attitude they enjoyed it a lot and regarding uh, our students' comprehensibility and accentedness, accentedness, sorry, we uh, noted that there was some noticeable improvements in comprehensibility, both in the shadowing and the reading task, but there was less improvement, less change in terms of the accent, which is understandable because um, it's, it's very hard to change one's accent and it might be linked to our identity or we might want we we might not want to to do that and yes it is understandable isn't it so there, there you go there you go it, it does seem to lead to some very interesting uh, results and let me show you an example so we've got this first part the first part of this fable the and and the grasshopper. Let's listen to the audio before the course and the audio after the course. The ant and the grasshopper. One summer's day, a grasshopper was hopping about, chepering and singing on its heart's content. An ant passed by, bearing along with great toil an ear of corn he was taking to the nest. Why not come and chat with me? said the grasshopper, instead of toiling and working in that way. The Ant and the Grasshopper One summer's day, a grasshopper was hopping about, chirping and singing to its heart's content. An ant passed by, burning along with great toil and ear of corn he was taking to the nest. 
Why not come and chat with me? Said the grasshopper. Instead of toiling and working in that way. All right. As you can see, this student's pronunciation has improved a lot. Her vowels、uh, became different. That there were more vowels than、uh, her consonants have changed、uh, a lot. For example,、um, her、uh, aspirate. What her plosives became aspirated, and then the the、uh, the rhythm of her speech. I, I think it's very, very different this time because she took her time. She spoke slowly,、um, more slowly, and, and in, in general, I, I think that she tried to highlight constant words, and it was much far easier to follow what she was what she was trying to say. So that that, that there you go. Shadowing、uh, does. Does help us to improve our pronunciation. And if you'd like to learn more about shadowing, I left a couple of resources on this slide. And finally, let's go to the last part: conclusion. What can be said about shadowing? Or, or, or well, uh, about uh, teaching pronunciation online. First of all. Pronunciation can be taught online. It can be taught online, and there's a wide array of programs and apps, especially Google Workspace、uh, apps, that we should be using in our classroom. And shadowing could be a great supplement to what we're already doing in in class. And, and I think I be, my firm belief is that most of these techniques can be used to enhance blended learning. Most of them can be used one way, combined one way, or or another with、uh, with our actual techniques. For example, shadowing can be assigned as homework. Yes, so we could do something in class and then assign shadowing as homework. So there you go. That would be all for 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 today. Let me go to well. Here are my references. My references. And here's my contact. Basically, it's Maxim Barkov at anat dot unam dot mx. And if you'd like to access the presentation, it's bit dot ly slash mv underscore and then the name of the conference. And I would like to 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 say thanks、uh, to Elizabeth Castro for her help with. Uh, with the research we are carrying out, and that would be all. Thank you very much for your kind attention, and I think that we might move on to the Q and A session. Thank you.